Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss how we can configure vSphere with Kubernetes on a vCenter infrastructure. So for this uh, demo, I have a lab with NSXT uh, set up with my vCenter 7.0 update 3. And uh, I have a three node cluster with 64 GB RAM each on which I'm going to configure the vSphere with Kubernetes. Now, uh, let's start with the demo here. All right, so let's just, this is our vCenter infrastructure. And uh, in this infrastructure, you can see I have three ESXi servers, ESXi 1, 2, and 3, with uh, around 64 GB of RAM. Now, we can open the uh, network settings, and you can see I have a TCA-TKG segment created on my uh, NSX layer. Uh, it's an overlay TZ transport zone. Now, if you go to NSX and see, this is the segment which I, am be, I will be using with 10.244.50.1 as gateway. The DSE server I, ranges is already configured and I have a DNS server in place. Now, ideally when I uh, use this, it should be easy, I, any object should get an IP address automatically with the proper DNS and uh, gateway information. On storage side, I have a tag already configured with k8-storage on content library, I have a subscribed library to download the TKG referenced files. Now we can go to the workload manager. Uh, this is the place uh, from where you need to enable the workload management on vCenter 7.0. Here you will see an option to select NSX or a VDS switch. I'll be using NSX for this lab. Now you need to select the cluster where you want to configure vSphere with Kubernetes. So I'll be selecting my region A01MGMT and hit next. Now here it's asking me about the storage policy that I'm going to use. So I have already a K8 policy configured. Uh, which is referencing to that tag. So if you'll open the view data store under K8 policy, you will find that data store, uh, which I showed you a few moments back, some time back. Now, uh, on the network mode, you can select either DHCP or static. DHCP, if you'll select, it will automatically pick up the IP address, but I'll be using static. I'll select the network as TCA TKG, the segment which I created for this test. Now, for the starting address, I'll enter the address that I have, uh, that I'll be using. And uh, the subnet mask is uh, 255, 255, 255, and zero. The gateway is 10244.50.1. And uh, yeah, so the, the DNS search name is optional, so you can skip it. And SNTP server information is already filled up by the vCenter because it already has that detail. Now in this, at this stage, I need to select the workload management network. I'll select the switch management as it is a VDS which I'm going to use with edge cluster one and T0 TKG, uh, the gateway that I have. Now I need to enter the DNS server details again. I'll just paste it here. Now everything looks good from this end. Now we need to enter the ingress cider and then egress cider, which NSX, which these services will be using to communicate externally from NSX. So I have set up these values. Now we can add the content library which we created as it would be required in order to download the TKG uh, reference files. At the moment, I'm going to select the size as tiny. The DNS name is optional, so we can skip it. Once we'll finish, it will start configuring the vSphere with Kubernetes infrastructure. And uh, I have fast forward the video, but uh, to an extent where you can see what's really happening under the tasks. So you might see some failures regarding downloading few of the reference files, we can skip it. But uh, at the crux, if you'll see, uh, we are currently deploying an OVF template, actually three OVF templates on this cluster. And uh, along with that, we are installing the agents and all these work, all this work is done by the EAM service, which is, uh, which comes with the vCenter server itself. So it's a native deployment. So here you can see uh, the deployment of OVF is currently going on.
Now, if you'll see the deployment is completed and the cluster is running, uh, you can view the services. At the moment, we don't have any service, so it will all be empty. Uh, it's just the first task of the, so creating the supervised cluster is done. So uh, under the configure general tab, you can see the control plane VMs that you have with the namespace service status uh, currently showing as inactive because we have not done anything. The content lib library is default. The network configuration is everything that we have already set. You can make few changes here as well. If you want to make any changes with the ingress or egress, you can use this location. Uh, you will see the certificate details here as well. And the image registry is currently disabled because we have not enabled Harbor. So let's go back to the summary and uh, start, go back to the workload management now. Here, uh, you will see the cluster is currently running. If I select that supervisor cluster under that, we don't have any namespaces at the moment. So we can skip it under NSXT, you, under the segments, you will see the uh, three new ports being added for the segment as now it is being used by the supervisor VMs. That's uh, here you can see all the three supervisor VMs showing up and running under, and under the admin status. So this is how you configure the vSphere with Kubernetes. And uh, in the next session, we are going to create a namespace and uh, then later on create pods and uh, PVCs as well. Thank you very much for watching this video. Have a good day.